All right, biologists, let's take a look here at the pedigree chart with this IGCSE uh, best paper question. Huntington's disease causes damage to the nervous system. It is an inherited condition caused by a dominant allele, big age. So this is a dominant condition, which means if you're either big age, big age, or big age, small age, that means uh, affected by Huntington's disease. I'm going to write here affected. And they say only individuals who are homozygous for the recessive allele, which means small age, small age, they are protected from the disease. That means they are not affected. So I'm going to write here. All right, so the diagram shows the inheritance of Huntington's disease in a family, and that's important because family pedigrees can only show you inheritable conditions, inheritable traits. You cannot see, I don't know, haircuts or something that is not inheritable with a pedigree chart. That doesn't make any sense. So let's take a look here. So how do we read the situation here? Let me erase this arrow here. How do we read this? This part here, this is standard, right? So this is standard. It's not an IGCSE convention. It's how it's done everywhere. All biologists, non-biologists, everyone. This is, the, this is the legend. The symbols are always that everywhere in the world. Every test, everything, always. So square is a male. And circle is female. When we're talking about male and female, we're talking about reproduction, right? So it doesn't, uh, it's not taking into account gender identity or uh, hormonal conditions or, you know, chromosomal condition, nothing. It's just in this family, in terms of reproducing and passing on alleles, who's giving the sperm cell, who's giving the egg cell. That's all. That's all. Male and female here can read as sperm cell, egg cell, and that's it. When the individual is uh, affected by the condition you are studying, when this individual has the condition you are studying, then we mark the, the individual. So instead of just the outline of the shape, it is a solid shape. And if you don't know, let's say, individuals... Uh, N and O, for some reason, I'm going to have a baby, and O is pregnant, and we don't know the, the sex of the baby, we don't know male, female, or anything, so you don't know, she's pregnant, just got pregnant, no idea what's going to come out of that, you can put a diamond, that's fine. Also, N and O are siblings, so uh, not a good idea in general. So let's erase that. So how do I know N and O are siblings? Because uh, they come here from the same parents. So let's start taking a look at this generation here, this generation one. You have A, which is male, and there's this link here that means they having a baby. They're having a baby to get at least one. So here, this arrow, uh, this line pointing down here, this is the next generation coming down. And so B, which is a female, and she is affected because it's not just the outline of the shape. It's filled with gray here. So B is a woman, and she is affected by Huntington's disease. It means either she is big age, small age, or big age, big age. And they had four children. They had E, which is another affected female, they had G, not F. See how F is not connected? That means F is not uh, a child from this, this relationship here, right? So G is the boy they had. They had H and they had I, which is an affected male. G met F and they had little L here. It's their child of this couple here. What do we know about this? F person, not much. I know that she is a female and she is not affected. I don't know, know anything about her parents. It's just not showing here on the diagram. 
C and D, they had two daughters, J, K, for real, and J met I, the affected male here. They had three children, M, N, and O, and N is an affected male, right? So what we know about this, just by looking, we can see these families and we can see if they are male or female. We can see the relationship between them and we can see if they're affected or not. Now, the cool thing is the question told you, this is not always the case. I know that the not affected are, not affected people are double recessive here. They are a homozygous recessive because the question told me. In this case that they are showing us, they told you, right? It's in the text of the question, homozygous recessive is not affected. So for this question, we are going to follow that instruction. And I know that the homozygous recessive is the only one I can identify just by looking at them because recessive alleles can only be expressed in the absence of a dominant, right? So we know that they can only be expressed uh, when they're homozygous. So not affected are all homozygous recessive. A is one of these people. What else do I know about this family? Well, I know that these people here marked in gray, they are affected. Now they can either be double age, uh, double big age here, big age, big age, or big age, small age. They can be homodominant or they can be heterozygous. How can I tell the difference? Like, for example, I do not know anything about this B person here. So by looking at them, and that's the thing with dominant uh, inheritance, you cannot tell the difference between a heterozygous or a homozygous dominant because there's just no difference. Looking at them, you, you can tell, you cannot tell, except if they have children. Now here we can see that individual E, for example, they received the big, I'm gonna use a different color for this. I'm gonna use blue. They received the big dominant Huntington allele from her mother, right? So the mother gave this dominant allele. How do I know it was the mother, not the father? Because the father doesn't have the allele. So it couldn't have been him. But the father then gave the recessive individual E is heterozygous. Okay, because the big age came from the mother, small age came from the father, each child will receive one allele from each parent. Now look at F, oh sorry, look at G, which is the child here, G, and H. Look at them, they are homozygous recessive. One of the alleles came from the father. What about the other one? The other one has to come from the mother. If one came from the father, the other one came from the mother. By looking at G and H here, you can tell that B is actually heterozygous, right? Because I'm looking at the children and the children are homozygous recessive, right? If you don't quite get it, you can look at a Pune square. Pune square, the Pune grid, I think the IB calls it a Pune grid. On top here, you put one of the parents. I'm gonna put the mother here. So the mother is big age, small age. The father here, on the other hand, is small age, small age. And what we do, we give here to the children one allele from the mother, one, sorry, from the father, one from the mother, right? Can I return? Yes. So one from the father and the other one from the mother. By convention, we put the dominant first. So here on this column, this is the column with a big age and this row here has a small age. Now, this column will receive the small age and the other small age. So what is the probability of this couple having a child who has Huntington. Well, has Huntington is this column here 
that is two out of four, which is 50%. So this couple in particular here, A and B, the probability of having a child with Huntington is 50%. A probability of having a child without Huntington is the other 50%. And then you're going to look at this, you're going to be like, oh, look at that. It kind of fits two out of four. They're actually Huntington and two out of four do not have Huntington. That's not always the case, right? Sometimes because that's the chance and you run the chance for each child. So if the first one has Huntington's and the second one doesn't and the third one doesn't, it does not mean that the fourth child will necessarily have because this 50-50 is for each child. Is it as if for each child you toss a coin and it could either be Huntington's or not Huntington's, and the one child having it or not does not affect the outcome of the next child. So keep that in mind. What about this couple here? The same, right? Because it's the same phenotype. Sorry, same name. Genotypes for each one. Genotype is the combination of alleles, so it could be big age, small age. Um, small age, small age, the probably probabilities are the same. And here, two of them do not have Huntington's. This person here has it. So voila, really quickly, we figured out the genotypes of everyone here in this family just by looking at them. It's not that hard. It's not complicated. You just got to stop and write down on the test, that's fine. Find a, a corner somewhere uh, next to the, to the diagram and annotate, right? Annotate. If you think it's going to help you, um, annotate. Just be mindful of the time. After all, you do have a uh, limited time for the question. J IGCSE gives you one minute per mark. So if the question is a simple one mark question, you probably do not need to do all that. It's gonna be straightforward. Now the question requires a little bit more thinking and it's gonna take more time, then it's going to be a question with uh, more marks.